Hello ladies and gentlemen, and all the great people on the other side of the screen. Welcome to my reading room back again. Today we're gonna speak about electric cars, about electricity in your life and in, in the life of, of your cat. So today's article is called Electric Future Battery Reboot. One electric cat power, graphene the savior and Chinese innovative thinking. Disclaimer, as usually. I'm reading that stuff for the first time uh, and only once, so please forgive me my mispronunciations and other confusions. Can you imagine your cat powering your electric car? Do you remember petting your cat gently and getting an unexpected electric shock? Have you ever thought why this happens? Have you ever thought you can feed motors with this electric energy? The point is that cat's fur is good at accumulating static electricity, which is an imbalance of electric charges within or on the surface of physical material. This imbalance emerges when two surfaces contact and separate, and at least one of the surfaces has good resistance to electric current. During the contact and separation, the electrons start escaping from one material to another leaving one of them with an excessive positive charge and the other with an equal negative charge. When you touch the cat, you steer the imbalance of charges, become a conductor and set the electricity free through your body. In other words, when your cat rubs against carpets, blankets and couches, its fur starts accumulating positive charges. The cat gets very fluffy, then builds up its own electric field and attracts small pieces of a recently told newspaper, the so-called static claim. The cat carries thousands of volts in its fur, thousands of volts in its fur, guys. These volts cannot break free because of the dry air. The air simply does not allow them to break free as it is resistant to current. And uh, then you touch the cat and lock the circuit. Another example of static electricity in action is lightning. Stormy clouds generate a positive charge in their upper layers. The Earth's surface is always negative and it takes some raindrops to emerge in the air to lock the circuit. The problem with your cat is that its fur both generates and discharges energy very fast. It can discharge even in a microsecond. Therefore, it has a high power density, which means fast immediate discharge, but not energy density, which means slow gradual discharge. For cars, the latter is much more important unless you prefer to accelerate brutally for a couple of meters and, and then stall. Worse than that, the static electric units do not have a great energy capacity. Even if you taught your cat to discharge slowly, its electricity would still run dry comparatively fast. Contemporary lithium-ion electric car batteries have nothing to do with static electricity. Almost nothing. Their currents are generated by chemical processes. The ions of lithium get into reaction with cobalt and start flowing from the negative pole of the battery to the positive. This causes the battery to produce electricity and discharge. In the opposite way, when a powerful external circuit is connected to the battery, the ions of lithium are forced to travel back from the positive to the negative pole. The cobalt then becomes clean and the battery charges. The problem with lithium-ion batteries is that they charge and discharge comparatively slowly. In a drug race, you cannot be brutally fast. The battery is simply incapable of feeding motors with thousands of volts in a microsecond. Also, you can't charge your battery in less than 30 minutes. It may explode otherwise. Finally, constant cycles of charging and discharging undermine the efficiency of chemical reactions. 
your lithium ion battery dies with time and that battery if not recycled becomes an environmental zombie in this light i find the improvement of the cat powering technology very attractive and mates we have some notable progress here take for instance the chariot motors company in summer 2018 these blokes put five electric buses on the streets of Belgrade, Serbia. Before that, they successfully entered the public transport market of Israel, Austria and Bulgaria. The chariot buses are propelled by static energy units called supercapacitors or ultracapacitors, which work very similarly to the cat's fur. They are made from layers of activated carbon which is coated on conductive plates immersed in an electrolyte solution. Supercapacitors look like big boxes mounted in what you can, could once have been engine compartments. Because these boxes are very fast at charging and discharging, it takes five minutes for them to get full and propel the bus for 18 kilometers. Minor charging updates can be done at very bus stop. What is more, supercapacitors mainly store energy in the electric field, which prevents them from degradation. And now, breaking news! The graphene thing was discovered in 2004 in Manchester, UK, and gave new hope for a supercapacitor's revolution. Graphene is considered to be a wonder material, consisting of a thin two-dimensional layer of carbon atoms. It is the lightest, strongest, thinnest, best heat and electricity conducting discovery ever made. It is more than a hundred times stronger than steel and five times as light. Hundred times stronger than steel and five times as light. I mean, that gives me to think about. Anyway, Graphene provides an incomparable surface area to its rivals, which allows it to allocate incomparable volumes of energy in its electric field, much more than the furriest cat can handle. And this can solve the energy density and capacity problem for static devices. Graphene came uh, as such a blast that its pioneers, professors, Andre Game and Konstantin Novoselov won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010. So, I mean, it's a big deal, kinda. Wonders do not end here. Mate, you can produce graphene by yourself. Uh, all you need to have is a lump of graphite, for example, from, from a pencil, and a tape dispenser. Put the graphite onto the sticky site, pull the tape away, and you have the graphene layer glued to the tape. What does the graphene discovery mean for electric vehicles? The leap to the unknown. With its amazing properties, none of the scholars and engineers can predict where graphene will lead us to. The most modest assumptions are the manufacture of energy-efficient cars, which can be fully charged in seconds, for example at traffic lights. Their chassis will be super strong and super light. They will keep on rolling for decades as graphene does not lose its energy storing capacity with time. Graphene does not rust either. These cars will also have no bulky batteries as you can mount graphene supercapacitors even inside a steering wheel. Graphene can be also used to improve lithium ion batteries or to introduce lithium sulfur ones. The latter are much denser than the former. They also can store four times as much energy as lithium ion. On top of that, sulfur is incredibly cheap, cheaper than cobalt. However, the up-to-date lithium sulfur batteries cannot serve as long as the sulfur easily dissolves in the process of chemical reactions. The layers of graphene if neatly placed between the negative and positive poles of the battery, can prevent sulfur from overreacting and make the battery more durable. In a word, 
you will get a much lighter, smaller, cheaper and denser unit than we have in electric vehicles today. Also, with the graphene in play, solar-powered cars will make much more sense. Their weight will drop to, to below half of a ton, which is comparatively easy to propel. Their graphene body parts will become supercapacitors capable of storing electricity. The graphene itself may be reprogrammed to work as a solar cell. Elon Musk and his chaps are believed to be working on graphene supercapacitors for on land and outer space uh, explorations, though they seem to deny this. But the people actually working on the technology are the Chinese. And let us have a closer look here. In my previous article on China, I mentioned that the indigenous way of car making there, as well as life in general, was quite traditional and hierarchical because of the impact of Confucianism and its rituals. Then I read a comment from Lu Betsan. I know that the Chinese first invented paper and gunpowder. And you say in your article that the Chinese will keep on copying because of their philosophy. This is contradictory, don't you think? Thanks, Lu, for this comment. Mm, so let me write a word now about how the Chinese innovate. Because they definitely do. On a wide scale. Though maybe not in a groundbreaking or attention-grabbing way as we do in the West. First of all. China is considered to be the world's leader in electric engineering. To compare, while the Chariot Motors produces a dozen of two electric buses per year, the higher factory from Sunzhou produces 17,000. And this is only one of the Chinese factories. But what I find especially mesmerizing is the Chinese company HKG, or Hybrid Kinetic Group, from Hong Kong. In 2017, at the Geneva Auto Show, they presented their H600 Pininfarina design concept. A fast, long-enduring, luxurious and beautiful automobile powered by a graphene-rich unit. This is the quote from their press release. The H600 is a range extended electric drive vehicle powered by Hybrid Kinetics Group super battery system and a micro turbine power generator as its range extender. This golden combination is seamlessly integrated into the powertrain. The 60 kW micro turbine is characterized by extremely high efficiency, 40%, very low emission and very low maintenance interval, 10,000 hours. It generates clean electricity to charge the super battery. The super battery has an extremely long lifespan, 5000 charging discharging cycles, as well as high energy density, 300, uh, 300 density units. The H600 has both explosive power and endurance going from 0 to 100 km per hour in 2.9 seconds and a range of over 1000 km. End quote. So, what you have here is a unique electric car, which can be charged from the grid, as well as from its own microturbine, and works on every fuel which can burn. A really revolutionary, practical and emission-low hybrid. Hellish acceleration, 800 brake horsepower, mates. No range anxiety, up to 30% of battery regeneration from braking and moving. Easy to maintain because of few parts. And finally, a little bonus. The H600 can power a house in case of need. The Chinese have really innovative technology today. The only two things the Chinese took from us, Westerners, are Italian design and British graphene. But they took these things, improved them and will put them on production lines soon. While we keep on looking at blinking. Or do we? Mate, I just had a revelation. It seems that graphene can, became, can become a game changer in space exploration. We can build a big human piloted robot from this wonder material. The robot will be immune to any kind of physical harm, be it space debris or the fangs of the alien. 
it can store electric energy in each of its body parts and therefore keep its mechanisms running. Its graphene solar panels can generate electricity directly from the sun. If needed, it can be recharged in minutes from the orbital power station or O'Neill cylinder. The pilots will be encouraged to take cats on board as additional power sources. Space will finally become a cozy place. Hey, Jeff Bezos, are you interested? The bad news, however, is that graphene research is in its teenage years. There remain a lot of unknowns about this material. Its properties are still being discovered and are being tested in combination with other materials. Apart from this, no one knows how to produce it efficiently on an industrial scale. The two-dimensional crystallites tend to bend in third dimension when graphene is chemically synthesized. So, much is ahead of us. Ahead of Jeff and I, obviously. Postscriptum. No cat was injured in the process of writing this article. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.